in this video we want to how to create a server socket uh, or actually a socket program so i'll first create a directory for put our program let's call it server and let's uh, also make the source file name is also server so let us uh, let first I make the class the declaration and the declaration of main method. Right. Now it is time to declare the server socket. So the server socket class name is server socket. Uh, so, uh, socket new server socket at the creation time of the server socket we have to specify the port which is need to be listened I'll name it as 1 2 3 4 5 because we can go up to 6500 and up to something that is exactly same as 2 to the power 16 so after creating the server we can get a connection from that uh, server when a client is connected to that so we can get that through accepting a client so this accept method uh, will put, give the reference to the client as a socket so we will flip it as like this and there are some exceptions I'm not going to handle those so I kind of throws those exceptions And I'm going to import these two server socket and the socket class. Right. This uh, server accept method is, method is kind of blocking. So it will wait until the client is connected to that. So we can, without any hesitation, put into a infinite loop because we can close the server by pressing ctrl c so and this will not run infinitely in a quick sessions because it will serve one client at a time and for serving clients we are not going to use threads as the normal way we just going to read what is coming from the server and then and then uh, just uh, send some message message to the client and quit serving that particular client if that client wants to serve again then he can connect it connect to the server again because this was a kind of simple server so i will first get its input stream so i can read what is coming from there here i will i'm going to use the scan to read this so i instantiate i kind of decorate this with the scan uh, by passing this as the argument so I can get the scan right then what is left for me is a reading from the scan while this scanner has next line I will read that line and print it And then print it so this is the way but uh, you may see that there since it was uh, that after connection happens it will stay long as we are going to do something on on it so there will be kind of a termination so here for serving the HTTP request as well I'm going to assume that two empty uh, lines or empty strings that comes as lines to the server is regarded as kind of a request for that means kind of a message saying that this uh, message is over so what I'm going to do that so that means I will first uh, that means uh, create another string called line let's put something in there so, line. so and I'm going to read this to that line so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to check that 
whether it is equal to the empty string. So what I'm going to do is uh, so that means whether I say check that equals line dot uh, line we will read the line from here and I want to I want to check that it is coming in quick su succession so that means those are that means uh, that means that uh, that means those are con that means uh, one after the other so that means uh, I will uh, check that that uh, the created line is empty as well as I will check that the previously read line is also empty not equals to empty line. right and that's all about the reading now it's time for that means uh, getting sending something to that so I will I has to get the from the client uh, it's output stream since output stream as well is very hard to manipulate I'm going to wrap or decorate it with the print writer so it will be very easy to uh, manipulate that so I have to assign it to a referent I suppose there are double T's in here let's say out so there, then I can put some message out of print then, saying something like this is a sample cell. So, I suppose without uh, sending this, without decorating, will be kind of useless. Let's uh, kind of put some decorations on it onto the message. So I put some decorations, we can then flush this out, close, and we can close the client again. <coughs> Sorry. And that's all, and it will then move to the next client, or it wait until next client send the request. So what we can do is we can compile this. Yeah, I haven't imported the scanner as well as the print writer. Right, it's now working. It seems to be our server. So suppose it is started. I can connect. It to with the telnet. So I'm how I'm going to connect that. I will tell telnet local host since it is running in the local host. Otherwise we can specify the IP. Then the port address is connected. I suppose right. Hi, how are you? Right. Uh, as you know that escape sequence will be too empty. I suppose at least uh, one works fine. So it sends some message. This is a sample server. So can we connect with the browser? Yes, because I allow it to read the browser request and send some response. So how to connect uh, to that? Uh, local host. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Here is the response we get. And if you haven't seen an HTTP request, you see that the get request uh, with the host name, connection, use agents, and all this stuff. You can use this kind of socket to get your get improve your knowledge on the HTTP connections and those stuff. Suppose you use this in good purpose. And thank you all for watching this video.